why do we use the pumping for fascia and fluid and joint? To get the fluid to move. Also to maintain the spaces of the body. I'll go lightly into that when we get to it. And they're also enhancing the micro movement of the joints. The micro movement of the joints, we'll use the knee and I'll try to stay on the knee. The micro movement of the knee is about anterior, posterior translation, which is all part of knee flexion and extension. Medial and lateral translation, which automatically occurs with different movements um, of the knee joint. And then also the rotation. The rotation of the tibia underneath the femur and the femur also in relationship with the tibia is really important, again, for just the basic flexion and extension. So we'll talk a little bit about the micro movement of the joint and how it's dependent upon the fascial components or the fluid components. And then also the more fibrous things that we normally talk about, ligament, tendon, break ligaments of the meniscus, the meniscus itself, all more fibrous structures. So that begs the question, where does this pumping fit in? Where does this fascial and fluid pumping fit? Um, again, I, the title thing is only for illustration purposes because ideally we're all working together on the same model of physiology and anatomy because this isn't about opinion. This is about, this is what is in the body and then how we treat it and how we train it should all be relatively the same. Yes, we can all have our, our differences and or our um our specificity, but some of these fundamentals, I believe, belong in all of these programs, which chiropractic, physical therapy, athletic training, there should also be a mention in all of those curriculums of the fluid dynamics and how we change it, not just one chapter on the fascia and there's some extracellular matrix around the body. For a chiropractor, we talk about you know um, setting up for the adjustment. The setup for the adjustment is just to make the joint and the fluid more mobile, mainly the fluid. If we change the fluidity at the joint within the capsule, whether it's the knee or the neck or whatever it is, it changes the amount of force that's required to make an adjustment to the actual deep structure of the bone, whether it's the tibia or the C3 or whatever it is. Longer lasting, That's a, those are big words, right? Uh, longer lasting happens because if we've changed permanently, whether it, you know, hopefully, ongoing if you give them the right exercise to reinforce this same fluidic nature whether it's LDOA or specific proprioception for the neck or for the MCL or for the LCL um, which is all taught all taught in the SOMA training program then we have a longer lasting effect then the next time we see that patient or that athlete we can move on to the next level of whether it's a fluid problem whether it's a structural thing or whether now we're ready to to strengthen and activate because now we know that we have the micro movement of the joint and the fluidity of the joint at a high enough level. 